All right. Well, happy Thursday. We're back. Um, we were laughing about George R. R. Martin using DOS-based word processor without spell check. Now, this is 10 years ago. I don't know if he's probably still using it, I would imagine. I mean, if you're, you're old and chromogeny, you're going to say old and chromogeny is probably my, my bet here. So, And he still hasn't published the last book. <laughs> well, I, so my weird theory here is no one liked the ending of Game of Thrones, the, the show. So he's like, crap, I can't publish this. No one will like it. They'll yell at me. So I don't know what he's going to do. I think he's just going to never publish it. Uh, but I don't know. Anyway, so we're going to talk about Texas Hold'em. Hopefully this went well. Um, once we get to this point, I want to show you as just a fun piece here that if we can calculate who wins, we can relatively quickly, I'm going to guess like 30 or so lines of code, I would, you know, we can actually measure it later, create a computer AI that will generate its actual odds of winning at each phase here. So we don't need to hey, say, hey, player, do you want a better call? We can play against a computer that says, hey, maybe if I've got a 50% chance of winning or better, I should call. Otherwise, I might want to fold or whatever sort of we want to do that. We can generate odds all along the way is just more combinations, right? So at the last point here, we we're just calculating all the possible poker hands out of seven cards. We said that's 21. Right, so 7C5, 21 combinations of hands here we're going to compare. So to do that at further steps along the way, there's just more possibilities we're going to have. Where if you know what two cards are, you know there's 50 left in the deck. So out of those 50, how many hands can you make for your opponent? So 50C2 is whatever that happens to be here. And then once I have those different combinations of opponent's hands, I can generate all the possible five card hands that are left. Turns out the number's a little bit big at some point, uh, but thanks to math, and we all love math, right? You're in computer science. I think you have to love math or suffer through it at least because some time ago someone decided that you needed to take a lot of math to be good at computer science, which I still, I, I guess from the computer science research academic side of things, it's useful. Um, from a, a strictly software engineering programmer, I want to be a developer, make computers go beep boop bop you probably don't need a lot of the math. But again, that's my bias uh, coming out here. So it kind of depends on what industry you work in. Um, I'm to tell you about my brother's friend in school. He got his entire master's degree in how to draw curves efficiently, and that works for AutoCAD. Like, an entire master's thesis on how to draw a curve. I'm like, I don't know how you stayed awake for that, but, you know, that's okay. Um, I'm sure it's interesting. And enables good stuff, right? I, I think we all benefit from advanced engineering software that engineers use. Uh, so, cool things. Anyway, so Texas Hold'em. So we got through some, eh, not a whole lot here, right, but some. So the idea was we started a poker hand that was going to be comparable to another poker hand. This is the core of the entire thing because everything needs to compare down to the poker hand so that when I generate all my 21 possible poker hands from a Hold'em hand that has two cards and five shared cards, I can find out what is my best possible poker hand. Once I know what my best possible five card poker hand is as a hold'em hand, I can compare myself to another seven card or two card with five shared cards hold'em hand that will generate its 21 possible best possible hands, possible hands and find the best possible one of those. So my best hand of 21 gets compared to their best hand of 21 and we compare that. We don't actually compare my two cards to their two cards ever. Because you, you, you can't. You, you don't know who's going to be better until you have your best possible five card poker hand. So we are going to abuse this I comparable everywhere. So everything will be I comparable as we go so I can compare these things together. So I know we left a couple um, fix me's. Like we never really finished any of this stuff here. Uh, we got a couple ideas here. Um, it was, you know, a good start, hopefully. And, you know, between you playing with this a little bit more and then playing with ChatGPT, I'm hopeful this was not the hard part of getting hand rank. Is that, is that a fair assessment? Maybe. Okay. So people are laughing. That, I mean, that's okay. Um, sure. You know, that, that's okay. So, like, we would say, hey, you know, if um, um, rank, I don't know what, get hand rank. Oh, no, that's not even it. Um, if well, is straight flush or is straight and is flush. Right. We return rank dot straight flush, something like this, and you just kind of work your way on down, and then we can just add these as properties or some methods if we want, you know, or sure, is straight is flush, these sorts of things here. Um, we can just add more methods in here. That's just a true or false. Is it one of these things? Right. You just work your way down from the top. You want the best hand first because if you start at the bottom, right, you're going to match a worse hand. 
Right? I think that was pretty straightforward. So we could add these ones in here. So, and if you want to make them public, fine. They're probably better as private. It doesn't super matter too much here if someone figures out what your hand rank is. But hiding more of the details makes it easier to use. So when someone says, hey, poker hand dot, they don't get 50 different, is it this rank, is it this, or nine different, is it this rank, is it this rank, is it this rank, is it this rank. That's probably not very useful when you have a get hand rank function you want them to use. So if you want to know what the hand rank is, you don't need to check nine different booleans. They can just get the rank back out. Um, so again, it's probably better as private, but it doesn't matter too much one way or the other here. So we can make another private bool um, is flush. This one's going to be easier to tackle here. I'll, I'll leave the is straight to later here. <clears throat> Excuse me. But we want to look at all of the cards, right, and look at all of these suits here. So if we kind of cheat and take some of this link nonsense here, we can say, hey, let's group them by the suit. Right? And then if the count equals one, right, if we have one group, they're all the same suit. That's one way to go about it here. Again, lots of different ways we can go about this here. Um, but I think we could just say group by dot two list dot count equals one. So if I group them all together by suit, if there's only one group, there must be a flush. I don't care what the suit is. It doesn't really matter. That's a flush here, right? And this sort of thing, you, you can do crazy things with link if you want. You can do them the, the loop way. I'm actually partial to the loop way usually, uh, but often now you're going to get this nonsense link stuff. Um, we can just figure that out as well, whichever approach you like. Now the fun thing, like you can go to ChatGPT and UMGPT is actually a super helpful tool. I know some people don't like when students use it and it drives me crazy because when I showed you the developer survey, right, there's like 85% of developers are using some sort of AI at some point somewhere, and it's not super specific, and I don't know what they're using or, or what it is here, but you know, can you explain what this is doing and give it this? And it's actually probably gonna give me a decent answer. Um, I, I've played with it a couple times. Uh, it's been a little while here, and I use some of, there's a couple different varieties of AI tools you can use um, as well. It's not always this one here. Um, let's see, maybe. Hey, link written in C sharp. Cards collection, which I assume is a collection of cards objects where each card has at least a face property. ChatGPT is so cute. Like, I don't know, I like that it sounds like a person. That, that amuses me. Um, what is four of a kind within a collection? Card face, group, to list, concrete, um, count. It's not actually a method call, it's a property. Check to see if exactly one four of a kind in the cards collection. If there is, it would evaluate the true. But like, this is actually halfway decent. So if it gives you nonsense, you don't know what it is, ask it. What does this nonsense mean? Um, you know, it's, it's a relatively friendly. Now, I, mean, I complain to my kids all the time when they yell at the Echo Dot. It's like my one daughter just gets so upset when it doesn't listen to her. She has a, a strong accent still from Ukraine. Um, so it, it's gotten better over the years, but it still doesn't hear all the time. And she just gets so pissed off at it and you know, yells at it. I'm like, no, you have to be nice. And most of the time when I talk to it, it understands me because I have the advantage of not having it. Or I have a Michigan accent. But I pretend I'd like I don't have an accent, but we have the, our Midwest accent here. Um, but I always talk to it and I say, please, at the end. I'm like, you got to be nice to it. You got to say, please. And if she stops to think for a second and remembers to say, please, she talks a little slower and it always hears her. So she thinks when she says, please, it always does it better for her and it just doesn't like her. All right. Is that cruel? That, okay. <laughs> Maybe it is. One of uh, my coworkers actually says something really interesting because he's been looking into prompt engineering. And he says for uh, specifically ChatGPT, actually when you say please to it, it's less likely to do what you want it to do because it introduces a choice. <laughs> it's, it's better for you just to be really bossy. <laughs> it's been very direct with ChatGPT. That's a very literal bot here. Yeah. Or could you please do this? I yes. Still, I still say <laughs> um, but that's sort of the idea. So we'll go through and we'll get all the hand ranks and we'll figure out what's happening with all these ones here. Now, I don't want to spend tons of time doing all of that. Is that okay if we skip some of them and not put all of them in? Um, the is straight. So let's do that. So let's, uh, can you write a similar method or, I don't know, method, sure, method that checks for a hand with a straight? We'll see what it gives us, right? GPT-4 Turbo, here we go. Yeah. This means something to smart people. 
So this one's better than the OpenAI one that's free, which is still the 3.5, right? You can pay for four from OpenAI. Uh, there's lots of different ones. Hey, public bull has straight given a list of cards. Okay, we don't need the list of cards because we have cards, but that's fine. Right? Okay, so let's do straight. And again, this is academia, right? We're going to cite our source here. Um, generally, I want like the whole conversation here, but um, GPT prompt. Um, all right, I'll, I'll give it the first one here. So this is prompt one. Oh, I probably should have done a comment block here. Hang on, that should be a block. Star. What did I do? Okay, sure. <laughs> we can fix this. Prompt two, prompt one, one. Gracious. I need a word star or something. This is prompt one. Sure. That's probably close. All right. We okay? Have I cited my source? You wouldn't fail me? I appreciate that. Um, I always did hate that in school. Like, I don't know. I always worry about that. But I feel like adding a code comment is pretty easy. So. All right, so history, we don't need to get the list of cards. We already have our list of cards, right? So that is our um, cards. Yeah, it's just cards. And then this is cards dot, was that going to be uh, face, right? Or to buy the numeric value. Sure. To list, sequential cards is one. When it is equal to that minus one, I have two sequential cards. If it's three, if it's greater than or equal to five, I have true. Reset counter because values are not consecutive. Okay, so we're only checking to see if we have five. I feel like there's other ways to do this, but sure, that's probably fine. If not, return false. All right, so now we have a, a straight flush. So this is, I don't know, is straight, has straight, is that better? We'll call it has straight. We should rename these then. So let's go refactor, rename, has flush. I like that. Okay, has straight, has flush, um, has four of a kind. Let's rename that one too. As four of a kind. And this one is after that one, right? Straight flush, they should look at our ranks here. I put them in the right order. Yeah, straight flush and then four of a kind, right? And then you don't need an else, right? Because if you return, function's done. So the else is, is you know, that's okay. Um, return rank dot four of a kind. And then if has, now this one was, is it a, a flush first? No, a full house, full house first. So we had a function in here, right, to get just the four of a kind out here. We could do a similar thing to see if we have a three of a kind. Now, this feels like a lot of work here, right? I'm going to leave that commented out here. Can I do easy? Okay. Now, if the only thing that's going to be different is I'm going to return check for a three versus a four, you're thinking to yourself, don't have the same code twice, dummy, right? You'd feel bad about it? Yeah, great. That's good thinking. So this is has... I don't know, n of a kind for an int n. Usually I hate n. I don't know, um, number of occurrences, number of occurrences. How's that? Does that sound right, number of occurrences? And we just say, hey, it contains number of occurrences, right? And I can use this now, has n of a kind. Sure. Um, so has n of a kind four, it's four of a kind. Has n of a kind three and has n of a kind two. That's a full house. I think that full house, right? And you know, I've done this several times over the last couple of years, so like this is quick for me because I've already spent the time thinking about these things. So, um, all right. So now we got our full house. Now we're going to do our flush. If has flush, has flush. Uh, return rank dot flush. Right? And then if has straight, return rank dot straight. Nope, just straight. There we go. Um, then we've got a three of a kind. If 
has n of a kind three. I'm going to return rank dot three of a kind. Okay. Now two pair actually gets a little trickier because this one needs to be special. We need to check that we have two different occurrences here. We could maybe turn this into has n of a kind and have a default of one, and then you could optionally pass it. Does it have two of those things? That feels like a bit of a stretch, but why not? That sounds like fun, doesn't it? Right. So we will have an int for um, number of occurrences and then number of repeats or I don't know, re repeating occurrences, repeating occurrences, and we'll default that to one so that the rest of my function calls still work. But now I can pass this to two, so I can check, hey, if it's two, I need to do a different thing, right? So if my number of repeat occurrences does not equal one, sure, why not? So, or how about if it does equal one, we'll do this thing. Otherwise, right, I can do this nonsense leak thing here, right? I can do number of occurrences to list twice. Right? I can cheat and just use that link code I had already. Say, okay, how many times on a group by face do I get two of them? Right? Do I have two of them grouped by face matching this number of occurrence? Now, if you give it three or four or five, it just won't work. Or right? you'll never get true, which is okay. This will only ever work if I'm asking for how many pairs do I have, essentially. Right? Or really, that's the number of repeating recurrences if I want here. Right? We've got some options. So. Now we can check that again here. So we can say if has n of a kind for two and two, return two pair. And then if has n of a kind two, return pair. Otherwise, return high card. Right? I think we're done. We didn't do tie breaks yet, but we can get the rank out. Right? Now the harder part, right, was when we were maybe not the harder part, but if we're gonna compare hands now. If they don't match, I'm sorry, if they, if they do match rank, now I need to go and tie break and figure out, okay, well, what am I doing here? And how do I tie break these things? So I think we did a couple of them. Or did this, all, did this do all of them? I'm trying to remember here, because they tie break a little bit differently, I feel like. If we looked at these, so for four of a kind, you check the four of a kind first. And then you look at the fifth card if you both have the same four of a kind, because you could both have the same four of a kind in the five shared cards. Then you're going to see who has the highest fifth card. Again, that, that's um, we'll just leave that as a to-do. Is that okay? You're not going to be mad at me for that? Uh, again, probably just a little bit more chat GPT stuff would get us through here if we ask the right questions, right? Um, but for now, I think I think that's okay. Now, I don't actually know if this will work, though, right? We don't really... I mean, I, I wrote some code. It probably works here. Right? We should probably write some tests. Should we just do like two? Is two enough? I think you did two, right? Is it okay if we do two? Uh, okay, cool. So let's go add a test here, or add a project here. So let's add a test project. Test C sharp. There we go. Make sure I get the right one here. <clears throat> test poker. Here we go. Why not? Sure. It's probably fine. Okay. So we want to test poker. Come on, there it goes, now it loads, okay. So I just want to test a couple hands here. So let's test, um, which, which ones do you want to do? Like straight flush should give me straight and flush. I should test a full house and maybe a two pair. So let's do test straight flush. Let's do a test, so we need to arrange, we need to act, we need to assert. Again, this is just a convention, other people might do it different ways. I, I'm very fond of this one because if everyone does it this way, then I know what to expect. But you can write unit tests any way you want, right? There's, there's no rule that means that you have to go like this. And some people write some really gnarly looking, you know, 100 lines of code with asserts everywhere, and they're confusing. So that's why I don't like to do that. But again, it's okay. Um, it'll work. So we need to set up some cards, right? So I'll have my hand. Uh, so this will be a list of type card then. Nope. Card. What? Card. There we go. Cards equals list of cards. we got to add our import here. Uh, install package stripe.net. Look at that. Wants to like use Stripe right away. That's fun. Credit card attribute and Stripe. We're gonna start charging people real money. <laughs> Feel like that might be bad. Uh, that's okay. So we want to using uh, no poker, right? Poker. Oh, my goodness. 
No, no. What did I do wrong here? I've got it here, right? I got poker hand. Is it not public? It is internal, public. Last poker hand, all right. Um, less accessible than Uh, do I have an enum in here? That's the wrong thing here. I think I probably do. Where'd it go? Where do I not have public enum rank? Public, public, public. I feel like that should be fine, right? It's all public now. Less accessible than property. Can I just build it anyway? Let me just try and clean. Build. Semicolon. Oh, semicolon. List of card. What did I do wrong here? I'm super confused. Card. This one. Freaking public class card. It's in the wrong one. Okay, that's why he was yelling at me. It was less accessible. Yes. Okay. Now can I do it? Add reference to poker. There we go. Using, okay. If we do this the right way, it should be a little happier now. Are you kidding? <laughs> All right, that's fine. Uh, so I want a new card given. New card. Given card dot. Add reference to poker. I did add reference to poker. Add reference to poker. Let me just see if I can build this one here. Dependencies, that's what I did. Okay, I gotta add the dependency. Projects, poker. What's wrong with this? It should have added it for me. Okay, let's remove it here. Add a dependency, add a project reference to poker. This all this magic just usually works. This is frustrating when the magic doesn't work. Why? Well, you got a little warning sign. Why? Why do you have a warning sign? It's killing me. We work on a unit test. All right, I'm, I'm sad. Everything's public here, right? Public, public. Does this one build? All right, that one builds. Let me try cleaning. Poker card. Oh, wrong version. Cannot be referenced by project that targets .NET Core version seven. Did I do the wrong version? Error reading contents of assembly version. Am I the wrong? Did I use version six or something? This says version seven, right? Version seven, version seven. Build. What? I okay. That's real bad. Hang on. Let's just remove this. Move. Build this one. What are you talking about? All right. Hang on. Let's go to. Let's see what I, I changed here. Let's go back to GitHub. We can always undo if we need to, right? So what changed? This changed. How did it change to five? Did I do that? I thought I picked seven. Okay, so I'm going to discard this one here and change that one back. Okay, and then those should go away, and then we can build. Okay, build successful. We undid whatever nonsense we did there, and let's go add a test project again. Add a test project. All of this to test the code that probably works. But it, that's important, right? It's important. Test poker. Conversions. Test book already exists. Uh, Sean Explorer. 
Poker. Nope. Poke. It's called, it's in the same stupid folder. Poker test. Test poker. Delete. Go away. Create. All right. List of type card. Cards equals. Can I add my import? Add reference to poker. Using poker. All right, I'm going to give up for now. Um, I will figure this out later. I'm super frustrated. Why? I... It hates me. It hates me. It made it public. All right, I'll figure that out later. We'll do your unit test later. Forget you. Just go delete. Okay. And delete test poker again. Test poker. All right, we'll come back to that. Assume it works, right? Now let's go back and make some hands, right? So now we have poker hand, now we need to make hold'em hand. So let's go add a new class. Add a new item here for hold'em hand. Okay, now hold'em hand, make this public here again, has two private cards and the shared cards, right? So you can either make a list, or you can just have card one and card two, whichever way you like here. Um, so we'll just say public card Card one, the public card, card two, it's probably fine. And then maybe a public list of card or shared cards, right? And then let's make a constructor. So public hold them hand, given card one and card two, and maybe even the list of shared cards, right? Maybe we give a list of shared cards, maybe we don't. Uh, we, I don't know, uh, we got some options. I guess we'll default it to empty. So we'll take uh, card one equals card one, and card two equals card two, right? And then our shared cards equals a new list of cards. I'll start empty, sure. We can go add cards to it if we want, because um, it's public, we'll have access. That's probably a little bit improper. We probably want some good functions around here, um, but it'll get the job done for now, right? So bad to leave public for now, but okay. So we can go add some cards here. So hold'em hand needs to be able to compare itself to another hold'em hand. So I'm going to steal this I comparable bit here. We're going to implement that interface where we compare ourselves to another hold'em hand. <coughs> Excuse me. So it says, no, you don't implement this. So yeah, let's go implement it here. Now, we don't just yet, but we can. So for now, when we want to compare to, I need to get my best possible poker hand. So I need a way to get my best possible poker hand. So we'll have a public poker hand method that returns a poker hand for get best poker hand. Best poker hand. Now this one, if we have seven cards in a list, we need to get out all 21 combinations here. There's lots of different ways to do it here. Um, I'm going to make five nested lists, that's, or loops here. That's the way that makes the most sense to me. I'm sure we could give up some other stuff here, uh, but that's okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So I have a list of type card list of type card, this will be all cards, equals new list of card, and we're gonna give it a couple values here. So we're gonna give it the card one, we're gonna give it card two, and we're gonna give it the shared cards. I don't think I can do that actually, can I? No, hang on, hang on. Start with those. Um, list of all cards. Oh, don't need new, all right? No? Card one, card two. New. Does it not work? All cards. Why? Fix the formatting? No. Can only use initialized expressions to assign to array types. Try using a new expression instead. So new, list of type card. Okay, sure. Sorry, I'm forgetting what shortcuts we can use, what we can't. And then I'll take all cards, and I want to add range of my shared cards. So add range will add all of those to this one. So now I have a list of all the cards. I have all seven cards. So for int first card index is zero, first card index is less than, now, this I'm going to cheat a little bit here because I know it can only be 0, 1, or 2. So I'm going to say less than 3. 
for sure did next plus plus. Again, I've done this several times here, but if you think about it for a second here, if you have seven cards, right, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. The index is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? If I want five cards at a time, the first three leave me four left. So the first card will only ever be 0, 1, or 2. From starting from there now, the next card is the next card. So the second card can be 1, 2, or 3. Those three. The third card can be 2, 3, or 4. The fourth card can be 3, 4, or 5. And the fifth card is 4, 5, or 6. So each one of these is one of these three cards. I'm going to put in a bunch of loops here. So of all the possible combinations here that I can get, right? I'm going to have, let me come down here, right? The first one will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then it moves on. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 5. I don't, why did I tab over there? That was weird. Nope. Don't tab. Sorry. 0, 1, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 6. And then the next number moves. So I'll have 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, 0, 1, 2, 4, 6. And then the next number moves. 0, 1, 2, 5, 6. Right? And then the third number has to move. 0, 1, 3, 4, 5, 0, 1, 3, 4, 6, 0, 1, 3, 5, 6. Right? And then the next number moves. So 0, 1, 4, 5, 6. Right? And then the second number moves. So 0, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And the last number moves. 0, 2, 3, 4, and 6. And then the third number has to move, 0, 2, 3, 5, and 6. And then the third number has to move, 0, 2, 4, 5, 6. Now my second number has to move again, 0, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now my first number moves, right? So all of these were combinations of my first card being 0, right? And I have, how many, uh, oh goodness, why doesn't I count rows? 1, 2, 3, can I put this in, I'll just put this in like VS Code. Because that one has line counts for me. Line counts are so much nicer. There we go. That's 15 possible combinations. Where's my zoom? That's ugly, but sure. Right? And now I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6. 1, 2, 4, 5, 6. 1, 3, 4, 5, 6. Those are all the possible combinations when the first card is index 1. Right? This one moves, this one moves, and this one moves. This one moves, and this one moves. And there's one last one, two, three, four, five, six. None of them can move. That's it. That's the last one. So this here all together then is all 21 possible combinations here. Five loops will do this for me, or I could just get them all out by index. If you want to type it all out, go for it. We'll do the same thing here. But five nested loops right, will do that for me. So then for the second card index, starts at the first card index plus one. And it goes to the second card, second card index is less than three, I'm sorry, less than four, right, because I want to go one, two, and three. And then second card index plus plus. And then my four int third card index equals the second card index plus one. Third card index is less than five. Third card index plus plus. You gotta be careful with copy pasting here because this will screw you up real hard and this one's gonna be hard to catch, right? Uh, for int fourth card index, fourth card index, is third card index plus one, fourth card index, no goodness, fourth card index, int, missed an int, that's why it's red. Fourth card index is less than six, fourth card index plus plus, plus plus, and then for int, fifth card index equals the fourth card index plus one. The fifth card index is less than seven, Right, and then my fifth card index plus plus. All right, all the way down here now. I've got, right, oh, what am I missing here? Missing one. No, wait. I the bracket. What? I think you missed a bracket. Oh, I closed one there. That, goodness, uh, K, K, where's my format? Edit, advanced, document format. What is it here? Format document. E and D. Control E and D. There we go. Okay. Anyway, so five nested loops, right? We're going to get all the possible combinations here. I want to make a hand. So I can make a list of poker hands if I wanted. Or if you want to go about it a different way, you know the very first hand is your best one until you know otherwise, right? When you count numbers, one of the very first things we did is if I give you a list of numbers, how do you find the biggest one? 
Well, the first number is the biggest until you find a bigger one. So my first hand will be the best one until I find a better one. Or I put them all in a list. Right? Either, either way should be fine. Technically, putting them all in a list would be a little bit of a waste of memory. For our purposes, we don't really care. So we'll go about the easy way. We'll take a list of type poker hand. This will be all hands equals new list of poker hand. And then I'll say my all hands equals a new poker hand. Poker hand given. Oh, shoot. Well, okay. So then all cards dot. I want to take the cards property, right? That's a new. Oh, poker hand. No, what did I need here? Poker hand. Oh, no, this is new hand. Poker hand. Hand is a new poker hand. And our poker hand constructor didn't take any values. So we have to go set the cards ourselves. So sure, why not? So uh, hand dot cards dot add range given. Now I have to get all of these values back out, or let me just do them one at a time, I guess. So let's just add my card, all cards, at, or no, uh, element at, no. Dot, oh my goodness, index. Why can I not use a list here? Is it, is it element at? Why am I dumb? It's just square bases, right? Square bases. There we go, of first card index. I want this to be like a vector where you, oh, that's fine. Second card index, third card index, fourth card index, fifth card index. We'll grab all the five cards. Now I have a new poker hand. Right? This should give you all 21 possible hands now. Right? Then what I can do after I have all possible hands, there we go. I can sort it. I can take my all hands dot sort. Because poker hand is comparable, it will sort. Right? It uses, it relies on the I comparable. Yeah. You get the max of it? Maybe. Yeah. Can we do dot max? Max. Use the maximum value of Jerry's. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Better than Eric's sort and pick last. That's right. All right. I like max. Yeah. That's, that's good. And again, all this cool link stuff. It's just awesome. This is an extension method, which is some of the fun stuff we looked at. So get the max hand and just return that, right? Return the max hand. All hands dot max. Now, possibly a null reference. Oh my goodness, it dot, uh, shouldn't be null though, right? Why would it be null? Possible null reference. No, I, it, no. Don't want to do that. All right, I think it's fine. I think it's just warning us it could be, but it shouldn't be. Okay. Oh, because it started in, yeah, whatever. It, it doesn't know for sure this will run, but that's okay. Um, now, this will not work very well if we don't have all of our cards, right? This will just, it will fail here because I'm trying to get indexes that don't exist if I don't have five shared cards. So we should at some point, you know, check for all five shared cards and like throw an exception if we don't have five shared cards or do something else or we, we can we've got lots of options right but for now we just admit that it's bad right maybe that's to do all right so i can get all the possible poker hands i can return the max hand so now to compare to i'm going to return my get best hand is um dot compare to the other dot get best hand why is that nullable i don't want nullable Right? That's all I do to compare to hold them hands then. Get my best hand, compare it to their best hand. Because the compared to a poker hand works, this will return greater than if I'm bigger, zero if I'm equal to, less than if I'm negative. So we're just doing compared to all the way down, down the chain here. Right? Uh, e and D, there we go. So that's sorted. So that's our hold them hand. There's not actually too much more to it than this, right? The hold them hand class really is just to generate its possibilities. And there's probably a different way we could have done this, but that's fine. Um, and we compare just, we already did the comparison. We did the hard work here. I just need to know what my best hand is. All right, so now we got hold them hand. So now we can go through and, so we've got new hands. So we want to show my hand and then the other player's hand. And we, we have options if you want to hide it and make it actually like look nice as a hot seat game. We can switch seats and then click turns and, Back when you used to play Civilization on the same computer, you have to sit in the same seat. Um, I'm that old. Yeah, that's that's okay. It was fun though. All right. Um, 
So what do we need? So now we need to do the rest of the game piece logic. So I think we have game classes. Now we need to figure out how to update the display separately from that. Hold'em hand is two cards. We highlight the best possible five card hands given the shared cards. Implement I comparable to the other hold'em hand. Cool, we can do that. Poker hand has five card hand, implements I comparable, compares poker hands. We did that one first, we just did that one. Now we gotta wire up our buttons to do the rest of this here, right? Interact with, right? We can have bets and we show the shared cards and these sorts of things here, right? So we probably will have a player class, right? That will track how much money they have because we were supposed to have so much money here. So we might have a class for player, right? Public class for player. And they might have a public int for, I don't know, money? Sure. Maybe not um, make this a get and set, right, uh, property. It's probably fine. Um, again, just letting someone tell you how much money they have is probably bad in the real world. This is, this is a, just a game here, just for fun. Players can give themselves infinite money. Since it's public. I don't know. Sure. We, we could have all sorts of other rules around how we set players' money and give them money and, and make sure that they've actually paid us and, you know, that's okay. That's beyond what we want to do here. So they're going to have some money and then probably have a name, right? Player one, player two. What else do we need here for players, right? Start with $100. Display their totals in the UI. Just bet a dollar each round. Players can bet. Rotate the first player each round. First player can bet or check. And then you call or fold. If you check, go to the next card. Then we put the share cards on, more betting, fourth card, more betting, fifth card, more betting. So it sounds like betting should be something that we can repeat distinct from what's on the board, right? Just call around for betting. It should know who's the first player, it should know who the second player is. We can turn buttons on, turn buttons off if we want. Um, got some fun things, right? So let's start with, um, let's give players a hand, right? So we'll have a public hold them hand, hold them hand. Sure, why not? We can get and set that. Non, oh, that's right. Okay, because we don't have a constructor. So this shouldn't, should be not null. Yeah, I guess we can just start hands every time we, we start, right? So we can have a public player constructor that says hold them hand is a new hold them hand. But hold them hand needs two cards. Oh, goodness. So we have to be able to, a way to deal cards to the player to do this. Well, that's gonna be a little bit annoying. We can either like give a deck of cards to the player. This, this feels a little bit obnoxious. So maybe we just make hold them hand be null to start. And we just deal with it. Um, null literal and non-nullable reference. I gotta make it nullable. Nullable hold them hand? Sure. Why not? So if we want to have a deck of cards, we can add a class for that. Add didn't we do deck? We didn't do deck already. Deck here. So deck has then a public, didn't we do it, Where? oh, we, we, did we do it in card or something? Did we do it in uh, another you program? Might dealt, you might have dealt inside of your form. Inside of your, yeah, in your program you asked. Oh, that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, okay. So we'll just steal this to make our deck, right? Probably, I mean, you don't necessarily need a deck class. We can just manage with this. Um, that's probably fine. Um, I just made my deck class for the uh, image. Yeah, I'm gonna steal that for deck because I like that idea here. So it's, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, list of cards. Now I probably want this to be private um, because I don't want people messing with my list of cards. Again, this, again it's a little silly, but that's okay. Um, so we got a list of cards here, and then we'll have a public uh, card, draw card. Now, I probably don't want cards of zero, but I could, right, if I shuffle my deck. So cards.shuffle, uh, isn't it? No, random. Goodness, there's a shuffle in here somewhere, right? C sharp, shuffle a list. Oh, the Bing AI is going to, Copilot's going to do it for me here. Randomize a list. Ugh. All right, that seems obnoxious here. So we'll cheat, we'll do a different thing then. So instead of doing that then, let's make a random here. So we want a private random, random, and we can initialize random, equal to new random. So using a random number generator, now I can return cards.remove at 
random.next, and I want from zero up to um, the max value that is not inclusive. So if I want the cards.count, that one, goodness, cards.remove at, out of void to poker card. Oh, okay, so, so sorry, remove, removes it. Can I set dot top? You have to get the value at there first. Okay, so I'll get the value there first. So instead of returning, get the card. Card equals cards at, oh my goodness, three steps then. If this was shuffle to be easier. Stop. So we'll get an int for random card index will be cards.next given the card count. Then we can pick the card at the random card index and they can remove at the random card index. Uh, missing some semicolons here, right? Turn card. Goodness gracious. So pick a random number, grab the card at that index, remove that index, and return it. So it should just draw a card. Or deal card, maybe? Deal card? Why not? We'll call it deal card. So then I can make a new deck, and I can deal cards off of it. I probably won't run out given this is Hold'em, and I know there's only going to be nine cards ever that we're going to use. Again, you know, it'll crash if I run out of cards anyway, so that's probably okay. All right, so now in my form here, let's go to the form code. I want to make a new deck, so I don't need the random. Oh, we, we did that right here. I had the same code, and I'm feeling bad now, but that's okay. Um, so we'll make a hand, so this is, uh, we'll make a player, right? So we have player one. Player, player one, equals a new player, and player, player two, equals a new player, and a deck, deck, equals a new deck. Great. Player one dot cards, uh, hold them hand, right? Dot card one equals deck dot deal card. That's a function call, right? And player two dot card one, deck dot deal card, card one, and repeat for card two. Card two and card two. Why is it not like that? Might be no, it's not null, right? It is null. We made hold them hand silly. So if it needs them in the constructor, we have to pass them in separately. All right, so it would be null. It's nice that it's warning me it's going to be null here. So I need to set them to a new hold them hand. So this will be player one card, card, player one, player one, card one, and a card, player two, card one. Um, all right. Card two and card two. All right. Now I can set their hold'em hands. So player one dot hold'em hand equals a new hold'em hand. Given player one card one and player two player one card two. There we go. And player two dot hold'em hand equals a new hold'em hand. Given the player two card one and player two card two. All right. And then hand label. This will eventually need to be the other player, but that's fine. The player one dot Hold them hand two string. Uh, now hold them hand doesn't have a two string yet, right? We didn't write that in here. So hold them hand should have a two string. Public string, or public ride string, two string. I'm gonna return a formatted string of card one and card two. You guys who did images are amazing. Um, that's more than I want to tackle right now. Yeah. When you're writing the code and adds that like blue like checker bar inside the screen, um, that has to do with the code in GitHub, right? Yeah. Yes. Well, so this is modified and not saved. Okay. Is so there a command you just come out that at once? So I've just been clicking through it like manually and adding them all at the same time. To do what? I'm sorry. To commit that because I'm mean, I don't know exactly if it's important or not, but I always click on those bars to add them to the. 
So you can. So Visual Studio has integration with Git. So you can go to Git here, and if you're logged in, you can go commit things individually from here. You can commit as much as you want. Or if you have GitHub Desktop, then you just save your work and then just yep. push everything through GitHub. Yeah, or you can go to the GitHub Desktop and commit from here. Okay. So I love that you want to commit a lot. That's a really good habit. Yeah. Um, that's awesome. I tend to ignore a lot of these colors. Um, sometimes they bother me and I, I, I pay attention to them, but these ones are like, that's fine. It's just a, a nice little visual cue. You haven't committed in a while. Like, as this bar gets real blue, go commit. Right. Um, that's all. Um, yeah, there's probably, I think there's probably a shortcut here, right? We could do a commit all and um, something. So I'm, I'm sure there's shortcuts. We could look it up if you want, like so, something quick. More than just a little bit of a control save, but. Um, all right, and then now I don't need this face value count thing. I don't need any of those, right? Because that was just our example code. This was all from ChatGPT. So let's go comment that out. All right, so I have the hand label for the player. This is their first hand. Right? And maybe we add another label in here then for the other player. Um, so let's go rename this one here. So let's go can I rename. I think I can do it right here, right? This is, oh, that's the face count label. Where's my other label? Hand label. There it is. There's the hand label. So this will be how about player one? Hand label. And then I should probably add another label here for player two or something. Um, so let's go to our toolbox, grab another label somewhere over here. Right? We'll call this the player two hand label. Again, UIs, I just I apologize, they're gonna be awful because um, this is not what we want to focus on right now. Okay? And then go back to our code here. So then our player two, player two hand label dot text is my player two dot hold em hand dot two string. All right, awesome. Now I need a place to show the shared card. So I'm probably gonna go back here to this one here and I'll call this the shared cards maybe. This will be my shared cards label. Right. So if you rename it here, notice when I renamed that first label, the uh, player one hand label, it renamed it inside my code. It's like right click refactor rename. Um, it'll it'll rename it everywhere for you. You don't want to go do that by hand. Um, that's all. All right. So we got that one. So then we should start some betting, right? So I deal my cards when I click my new hand, and then I probably want to turn that button off, right? The new hand button dot enabled or no dis yeah enabled is false. You can't click new hand now, right? Until other things happen. So maybe then I want to go turn on some other buttons. So uh, maybe we have a label for um, let's take a label for, no, good. Is that the new label? I just grab that? All right, that is. This will be current player label. Sure. And current player. Sure, why not? And I'll put this somewhere. I don't know. Again, we can fix this all later. It's okay. We just want to get this started. Um, so then I want to set, so my class probably needs to know who the current player is, right? Because we want to be alternating this here. So I'm going to have a player, current player. And then when this starts, I'll set current player to player one. Current player equals player one. Great. So now we have player one. So I'm going to take my current player label, text, no, nope, current player label, text. We'll set it to current player now, there's a really fun thing you can do in C Sharp. I don't know if we looked at this yet. I feel like it was like briefly mentioned in one of the chapters. You can say name of player one, and it will give you the string representation of your variable name. It's not pretty, but it's a real quick way to say, hey, player one, uh, without having to type it in and change who it is here. Oh, I'm sorry, name of current player, right? Is it current player? That might not be it. Shoot. Um, it might just give me current player. Let me see. Oh, that was going to be so fun. Yeah, uh, new hand. Uh-oh. Deal card is empty. Do we not add the cards? Oh, I made the cards here. Um, so I now have a local variable. There we go. Try that one more time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so current player. Shoot. Okay, we're close. We're close. So if current player, oh, all right. Well, I've had to do all that work. I can't use my name of then. That's fine. It was going to be fun. So we can say, hey, if current player is equal to player one, then current player is 
player one. Otherwise, player two, sure. Uh, oops, else, there we go. Player two. Not great if we have lots of players, right? This is not, you should have some sort of list that checks, or I don't know, whatever we wanted to do here, but now it should alternate. I should say player one. All right, so player one. So player one has six of clubs and ace of diamonds. Player two has five of spades and queen of hearts. Well, now what? Right now we have to do our betting. So we need a button for betting. So we'll go back to our game here. We'll have our button for betting. So we'll go to our toolbox, have a button for bet. This will be um, bet. And then a button for check. Check. All right, so this is the check button. This is the bet button. Right, so we can better check when we have a new hand. And then if we click bet, we probably need a place to show the pot too, don't we? Um, so we'll add another label. Here's the pot label. And let's give this the pot label. Uh, oh, nope, sorry. Pot. Somewhere out here. All right, so when I do new hand then, we should take away some money from our players. Uh, probably don't actually want these to be set up every new hand, right? Because they have their amount of money. So I probably want player, player one. Let's do that here. And then I want to actually create them in my constructor, or my initialize here, which is pretty much like the constructor. P here for player. Um, so now when the new hand button is clicked, the current player should alternate. Right, so I can look and flip this when I'm seeing who the current player is, I guess. Um, I don't have to do that twice, that's fine. So if the current player is player one, I have to set it to something, don't I? That's annoying, um, what do I wanna do? So if it's player one, set it to player one. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I don't want to set current player. Probably not now. I can do it. We'll set current player to player one. Current player equals player one. We'll figure that out after we finish the hand. We'll change who, who the player is. How about that? So every time we have a new hand, we get a new deck. We deal some cards. We set up the player's hold'em hands. We should take away their money, right? So player one dot money minus minus and player two dot money minus minus. We're going to do both players, is that what we said for the first one? Um, each player bets $1 each round. Okay, so you can bet more if you want, then you can better check. Okay, there we go. So each bet a dollar. So then our pot, then we should probably track the pot. So we should have an int for pot. Pot is zero. We'll set pot of two. And then we can set the pot label, dot text. Pot. Pot has a interpolated string. And then we can turn on our button. So maybe we initialize, we take our bet button, enable this false, and the check button, enable this false. And maybe we turn these guys on after we hit new hand. Right? We turn off the new hand button, we turn these ones on. So the player can do something. Let's see. Now we should at least get buttons that. When we hit new hand, okay, now we can better check. So I don't do anything yet. When our bet pot's two dollars, great. So if we check, then we're gonna go right to the next round, right? So somehow in here we need to check which round it is to do some round work. Oh, it's after seven already, shoot. Oh, we we're so close. We only, that's probably like 15 more minutes we'll be done. Should we take a break now? It's been an hour. Or do you wanna keep going until we're done? Keep going? All right, we'll keep going then. All right, um, so probably something that tracks our round, right? So int round is zero, right? And then when we hit new hand, we should set round equals zero again. Oh, I should put these in the initialize, shouldn't I? I keep yelling at everyone to do that. We'll set pot is zero, round is zero. I don't need player here, player here. Okay. 
Now we actually use our initializer. Should be a little happier here, right? Um, our constructor. So pot's two for the new hand. We know what the pot is, and then our round is zero. So now, if we want to check here, if they click on check, we just go to the next round. So we'll take our round plus plus, and then we need to deal some shared cards. So my shared cards, probably need a list for those shared cards, right? So we'll probably have a list of cards, card for shared cards, and then we'll make our shared cards equals a new list of cards, so it's empty to start. Great. So if round is one, or um, I don't know what, less than two, or I don't know, we'll say one. Sure, that's fine. We're going to deal three cards. So we'll take our shared cards. Dot add. We're going to add our deck dot deal. Oops, we not make deck. Deck should be a class level variable too. So deck deck. Deck. You should do that in. I think making a new hand should be fine because we can't get to anywhere else until we make a new hand which sets deck. You could initialize. I guess we'll initialize it too, just just for funsies. But we'll make a new one every time you click new hand button. So it should give us a, a brand new set of cards here. So you can take my deck. Dot deal card. Right. So we'll add three cards here for round one. Deal card. If round is two, else if round is two, then we'll just deal one card. And if round is three, so if round is three, we'll deal one card. This gives me all five shared cards. Right when I hit when I click check, depending on what the round number was. Right. Um, cool. So this should progress essentially to the next round. And really, this is going to happen if they call, if the other player calls, or I hit check. So for now, it's fine here, but eventually I'm going to move this to a place where I can either have the call button do it or the check button do it, right? So both ways ought to work here. And then if I want, um, I can make this, like this button, it can actually do double duty. How about this is the check or call button? So it'll start as check here. And this will be the bet or, oh, I'm sorry, um, bet or fold, maybe? Sure. We can make them do double duty, or we can add two different buttons. Right? Either way should be fine. So if we check then, we just go to the next round. Great. So we should be able to get some shared cards. Now we need to set that shared cards label. So shared cards label text is shared cards. And then you know, for, for each card card in car, uh, shared cards in shared cards. We'll take our shared cards label text. We're going to add to it then the card to string and probably a plus or a space. Maybe like spaces. Right, so we'll set it to shared cards to be empty to start and we'll just keep it appending here. So we'll append all three cards or four cards or five cards or nothing to start. So let's see if we can check. So we'll do a new hand, we'll check. We get some shared cards, we get another shared card. All right, it gets a little ugly. Maybe we should do new lines then instead of instead of spaces, because that gets a little long here. So, king of hearts, eight of clubs, queen of diamonds, king of clubs, and then nothing, right? Because we only said if the round is one, two, or three. Right, so I can click checking it all I want, it just won't do anything for me, which is probably fine. Right, so it essentially goes to the next round. As soon as I check, the next person is automatically going to call. Nothing needs to happen here. But if I bet now, now the other player needs to respond. So bet needs to have something happen. So on bet, when I click on bet here. So we're gonna say, okay, now let's change our bet or call button text to, this will be fold here. So I can give an option to fold. If the bet or call um, text is equal to bet, then we'll flip it to fold. Otherwise we'll flip it back. This feels a little silly to use the same one twice, but that's that's okay. We'll just have a little fun with it. Is that okay? Instead of having more buttons? Or would you like different buttons? Same button. Okay. We can reuse this button. So if we're betting then, now we're gonna flip this over to so we'll take my current player dot money, minus minus, they just bet a dollar. Right? We'll take our pot plus plus, pot goes up a dollar, right? Okay. So took their money away. 
flipped it over. Now it's up to the next player to decide what they want to do. They can either fold or they can call. So if it's not bet, it must be fold. So if it's fold, we'll take our current player, uh, current. No, goodness gracious. Stop. Current player dot money plus equals the pot. Right, so if the other person folds, the current player gets the money. Right? Sure, that one's pretty quick. And we'll set uh, pot back to zero, I guess. Right, or uh, maybe, and then turn back on the new hand button. So new hand button enabled is true. Turn these ones off. Must be true. Turn these buttons off. False and false. Right? So if this button turns to fold if it was bet, and then the other button should turn to call. So my check for call button dot text should turn back into call, right? Because that was gonna be a check or call. And if it was fold, I'm gonna put them back to the way it was before it was a check. I don't know. This feels a little silly reusing the buttons, but that's okay. We're just having fun with it. So if they're betting, they bet a dollar, and now it'll turn into fold or call. If it was fold or call, right, and they clicked fold, the current player gets the money, right, and we're gonna turn on the new hand button and then go to the next hand. Right, player folded, great, now we can deal a new hand. Okay, so that one's pretty good. So now our check button, this was if the text was check, I guess. That's a little bit ugly, but sure. So you can say if the check or call button dot text equals check. We'll do this thing. Otherwise, it must have been a call, so then I'll take my other player's money and take out a dollar. So if the current player is equal to player one, we'll take player two money minus minus and pot plus plus. Right? Otherwise, it goes to the player one money minus minus pot plus plus. And then we should set the button back to bet and check because they called. Right, so if they check, we just go to the next round. If it turned into a call button, let's call, take their money, and go. And again, we probably should check to see if they have enough money. These sorts of things, we could add in some checks here later, like does the player have enough money? That's a to-do we can tackle later. Um, right, when you run out of money, the game should just be over at some point. So um, that gets a little tricky right when you're down to zero dollars and you have to make sure that they can only bet one for the hand and those sorts of things, but that's okay. Um, so now we want that pot label to update and the player's money label to update. Do we have, we don't have player money label anywhere, do we? So we should add in, um, what, we, what labels do we have here? We've got the player hand label. Should we have like player money labels? Current player, pot money. Yeah, we can add some more labels, I guess. So we have player one label, player one, one money label, and a player two money label. Just copy paste. Why is paste is so slow sometimes here? I don't know why. But a player two money label. Money label. Right? Alright. And then probably set those text to nothing. Or player one money. Player one money. And player two money. Okay, so then we probably need a place to update that. And if we're gonna do it in more than one place, right, whether or not we're um, changing their money here or not, we probably want a function for that. So private void update player money labels. Player one money label dot text equal to player one money, player one dot money. And player two money, player two money. Player two money label, player two money, player two's money, player two's money. Cool. We can update the money label at the end of each of these here and the end of each of these. Right? Regardless if it was whichever one here, let's go ahead and do it. We'll update their money labels. Uh oh, build errors. Semicolon. There we go. Update the label. Did I miss another semicolon? Yep. Missed another semicolon. Uh, oh, probably should have done that in the constructor too then, right? I should update the money label. Um, probably when we do new hand, maybe? New hand dealt. 
Sure, we'll set that in here. I just want to make sure it gets updated somewhere here. All right. Uh, why don't my players have money? Don't they start with $100? Did I screw that up? Oh, I didn't start with any money. Oops, so money was 100. There we go. Should give our players some money. Now they have money to play with. Okay, now they have $100. Uh, should have taken a dollar out of each, right? My new hand. New hand should have taken player money out, right? Minus, minus. Oh, they updated the money labels first. If I update the money labels before I take away their money, they still have all the money. That's just an order of operations here. All right, now they have $99, the pot's two, right? And if I bet, now player one lost a dollar, right? Because it's, oh, I should have updated the pot too. I should update pot with player money label. We'll just call this update money labels, right? And pot should be pot. There we go, we'll put that in here. Right, we'll update them all at once. Try that. New hand, if I bet a dollar, yeah, now pot goes up to three. Look at that, now I can fold or I can call. So if I fold, player gets the money, pot goes to zero. Looks okay so far, new hand, bet and fold, player wins a dollar, bet and fold, player wins a dollar, bet and fold, player wins a dollar. Seems to be going okay so far. Um, how about if I check? Uh-oh, didn't change it. Oh no, check just goes to the next round. That's what we expected here, right? So that's fine. Bet, now if I call, uh-oh, turned it back. So we need a little bit of logic around what round it is to figure out when we're done. Right? When we call on the third round, stuff should happen, right? So let's go see where we're doing our call. So when we do our call, uh, that was check our call, right? Um, if the round is three, right? Um, we, should just, we should say who wins and then turn on new hand, I guess. So if round is equal to three, Let's take our new hand button, enabled as true, and we'll take our bet and call buttons, turn those to false. Where did I turn those to false before? Uh, here, we'll set those to false. Right, so if round was three, right, this is you know, round over, this sort of thing. This would be nice to have some sort of logic in a, like, a round, or a, game, I don't know, so putting it in a class might be nice. It feels like we're putting a lot of logic in our buttons. It feels a little bit bad. Um, trying to get all the points for UI just interacts with it, but I don't know. It, it's feel a little bit bad, but it's probably okay. So now once it's round three, then we have to say who wins, right? So we have to see which player wins. So um, if the player one dot compare to no, player one dot Hold them hand, there we go, player one dot hold them hand, compare to, player two dot hold them hand dot compare to, nope, I'm sorry, just compared to that, hold them hand. So if it's greater than one or greater than zero, player one wins. So we should spit out somewhere that player one wins. Um, we have like a result label, I don't know what labels do we have now. It would be a good place for that. We can make a new label or put in the pot label. Maybe we'll put in the pot label. Oh, it'll update again though. Shoot, we need a new label. We'll make a new label. Label. And this is the uh, round over label. How about that? We'll set the text to nothing here. And then we'll set our round over label. Round over label dot text to player one wins. One wins. Oh goodness, wins, exclamation mark. I wanna be excited. Else if they compare to and it's less than zero, that's player two wins, right? So if player one wins, then player one dot money plus equals the pot, pot equals zero. Otherwise it's player two wins, right? And then player two, Layer two dot money plus equals the pot. Pot and then the pot equals zero again. Sure, well, player one wins, player two wins. They get the money, whoever wins, right? Um, otherwise they tie, right? It is possible to be a tie, right? If it's a tie, uh, 
then they both get their money back, right? So we'll take player one money uh, plus equals the pot divided by two, and the player two money pot divided by two, pot goes back to zero, right? They each should have the pot. They get their money back because we're only betting a dollar here. This one's pretty easy for us to to figure there. Okay, so that is only on the third round here. Now, that's when we call. Hmm. So maybe this should be if we call then it's round three or we checked a third time, right? Because both of these things should happen when we do our last check, right? So let's take this and go uh, extract as a method here. This is round over. Okay, so we can say round over then in either case whether or not we checked or we called. So if we checked and it was round three, oh shoot, this should be round four then, right? So else if round equals four, then the round's over. Right? If you check the very last time, then the round's over at round four. Because it was zero, became one. So round should go up when we call as well too, right? Not just when we check. So if we call, uh, where did that go in here? So this is our bet or fold. Goodness, that's this one. No, not round over. It's this one here, right? This is check button. So if it was check, it goes up. Otherwise, it was a call. So I guess if either way, then we should increase the round, right? Whether or not it was a check or it was a call, right? Both ways should increase the round number. Right? Whether or not it was a call button or a check button, it should go to the next round. Right? Um, and actually, we want to deal the cards no matter what happened, right? So it's just if it's a check, then we don't charge anything. If it's not a check, so I think this is just going to happen at any time here, no matter what. And then this is if my call button checker call button dot text equals call. So if it was a call, then I have to charge the money. If it was a check, I just advance, no matter what. Um, I might have to charge the money first, right? Let me see. So before I say the round is over, I should set those. So if it was a call, do that. And then if the round was four, right, it would be a round over. Then we can go and do, because we'll have round is zero, round is one, round is two, round is three. We increase it first. So the first time when we have no cards, It'll be one, we'll add three cards. It'll be two, we'll add the fourth card. It'll be three, we add the fifth card. So it'll be four when it's done. I think it's four. We'll figure it out. We'll see if that works or not for round over. Um, we'll update our money label, see how it goes. So we'll do a new hand. So if I just check three times, one, two, three, I have all five cards. The next time I check now, we should just see who wins. Uh-oh. Oops, I forgot to add the cards. It'd be useful if I added the cards. So in our form here, yep, come on. When I go add them to the shared cards, I also want to go add them to the hold them hand shared cards, right? Or if I want to cheat here, I can say, hey, my um, shared cards, so I should say shared cards clear, clear the shared cards. And then after make the hold them hands, I can say player one dot um, hold them hand dot shared cards is the shared cards right I can make two lists pointing to the same location in memory sort of cheesy but it should work now right because they're both lists again this feels a little bad feels bad but don't need copies I don't think we don't I don't think we want three different copies I think we want them to use the same reference here we just want to make sure they don't don't um, change them right New hand, check, 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 check. Uh-oh, okay. Object not set to instance of value. The other is definitely a hand. Get best poker hand, does that not give me something back? Get best poker hand, compare to, was round over, what's not? Get best poker hand return null, uh-oh, okay. Get best poker hand. How did it return a null, poker hand? And 
I never added the hand to the um, hands. All hands that add the hand. So if I have a list of hands now, I can probably figure out which one is the best one here. Let's try that. New hand, check, 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 check. Uh-oh, uh, that label was in the way, but it came out as a tie, it looks like here. Let's see, where's that label? The round over label. Should make that like up, oh goodness. Make it like up here or something? And why don't we change this, this text here, right? We we'll change this font, make it a little bit bigger. Because this is, this one's important, right? New hand, check, 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 check. Player one wins. Hey, new hand, uh oh. So new hand should clear that then, right? So new hand should take our round over label, dot text, set it to blank, right, when we start a new hand. New hand, check, 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 check. A tie, okay. So a ten of spades and a nine of clubs versus an eight of clubs and a ten of clubs with two, nine, eight, three, four. Two, nine, eight, three, four. 10 and 10, 9. This should have a pair of 9s, right? Hmm. I guess we should say what our best hand is. Would that be nice? We show what our best hand is? Best possible poker hand, because we return the hand. We should be able to do that. So let's do that. So let's take our round over label. Where are we setting that? So on the round over. On round over. Take the round over text. And then we'll take our round over label text and we'll add in a new line and player one hand is player one dot hold'em hand dot get best possible hand. Right, and then we can add in player two's hand as well. Player two's hand, get best possible poker hand for player two. Sure, let's try that. So we can figure out what our hands actually were here, what, or what our game thought our hands were. Ooh, that overrode our first thing here. A three of a kind and a two pair, player one wins. Okay, that worked out. I just gotta move that other label now. Where is our player one hand label? Player one hand label, let's move that down to like over here or something, right? Player one hand label and your two hand label? Okay, that's probably close. New hand, oh no, they're, they're on top of each other. Let me just move that down a little. All right, try it again. It's annoying when I don't have text there, I'm sorry. All right, so two pair and a flush. Player two wins, okay, that was good. New hand, oh, it must have been the tie. When they tie, it probably screwed up. They both have two pair. So they have seven and 10, five and 10, the pair is 10, kings and tens. Okay, we never finished the tie break, right? Um, 10 of clubs, 10 of hearts, jack of king, jack of hearts. Oh yeah, no, that would be a tie, right? We'll do some checks here, another tie with a single pair, two of hearts, eight of spades. So I don't think we finished our pair logic, right? This is a pair of jacks, no, pair of eights. Yeah, pair of eights. So this one should have been better, but again, we didn't finish the logic, so that's probably okay. Player two wins with two pair versus this two pair. Do we have a higher pair? We might have figured out the pair thing, I don't remember. We didn't finish all the logic here. Player one wins. Let's try betting, and I can call, I can bet, I can call, I can bet, I can call, bet and call. And we finish our call, all right, seems okay. Player two wins with two pair. So I think we're pretty close here now. What do you think? Do we get most of everything? Mostly working few to-dos. How does it feel? That close to what we got? And then do images. A lot of folks did images, which is awesome. Super fun. Looks much better than mine. Um, and that's great. Um, so when we come back from break, I'll show you how we can turn this into generating odds, which will be fun. And then we can talk about databases, which is even more fun. I promise. It was lots of fun. We take a break. All right. I'll just pause the video. We can do it in two separate segments again.